Good afternoon. Welcome to Inside Indiana Sports Now with Kent Sterling. It's Friday, May 21st, 2021. We are brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. I'm telling you, here's an idea, Sedation Dentistry. If you have to get a lot of work done and you want a great dentist to do it, Sedation Dentistry by Dr. Mike O'Neill. Call him, 317-849-2933 is the number. Hit subscribe, punch like, ring the bell. Let's talk about sports. First thing we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the Pacers. Indiana Pacers, their season ended last night. We knew it was going to end at some point. It was either going to end last night or they were going to get run out of the playoffs by the Philadelphia 76ers. One way or another, it was over. The Wizards, I told you yesterday, were in a prime position to destroy the Pacers. They did that by 27 points. The line was three and a half. Wizards minus three and a half was a gift. I told you the over 237 and a half was a gift. If you invested based upon my advice, you went ding and ding. Are the Pacers going to run this back for another year in total, right? You got a bunch of guys under contract. It just doesn't make sense to trade a bunch of people, right? First of all, most of them have been injured and their value is going to be depressed a little bit by that lack of health. I'm talking about TJ Warren and Miles Turner. They're both under contract. Warren next year, Turner for a couple of years, Sabonis for three years, Brogdon for a couple of years, Levert for a couple of years, Lamb for a year. They got a lot of guys coming back that they thought were going to be instrumental players in a successful regular season this year. They've got three free agents, TJ McConnell, Doug McDermott, and Jakar Sampson. I'd love to see all of those guys come back. I'd like to see the Pacers absolutely run this thing back, but I'm going to give you two arguments against retaining Nate Bjorkren as the head coach. One of them was his behavior during a timeout last night. They had him mic'd up on TNT, and it did not do him any favors. It went a little bit like this. Come on, guys. You got to sprint back, right? The last four possessions, the Wizards have gotten three layups, and they hit a couple of free throws. So you got to sprint back. We're standing around watching the shot to see if it goes in. Come on, guys. We know the shots are going in, so sprint back on defense. Have you ever heard an NBA coach talk to a team like this during a timeout ever in your life? Like JV high school coaches don't talk to their teams like that. High school coaches don't treat their teams like that. These guys are grown-ass men. Malcolm Brogdon's 28 years old. He's trying to send fresh water to the people of Africa, for God's sake. He knows he's supposed to sprint back. That's what these guys, that's what they do. These are NBA players, for God's sake. So that's argument number one against bringing Nate Bjorkman back. Number two is a little bit more pragmatic because if you run this thing back this coming year, and like I said, These guys are under contract, right? So moving all these guys as trade pieces is going to be difficult. But if you bring back Nate Bjorkman, instead of going out and getting a charismatic leader who can help kind of make the phones ring in that ticket office, I don't know how many people you're going to have at Bankers Life Fieldhouse next year. I don't think Nate Bjorkman is a guy who can sell tickets. And because of that, you've got to give a pragmatic look at Nate Bjorkren as the leader of this franchise, the face of the franchise, the pregame face, right? On on Channel 13 or Channel 59 or Channel 4, they show the coach during the pregame kind of uh, media availability to give injury updates and that kind of stuff. You know what? Is Nate Bjorkren really going to motivate buy-in from a fan base who, over the COVID period of these 14 months, may have thought, I found some other stuff to do. I don't need to go to Pacers games to make myself happy 41 times a year. You know what? They need to sell tickets. And I don't know if Nate Bjorkren is a guy to sell them. I'll give you arguments to keep Nate Bjorkren because we don't know if he can coach. This 72-game regular season for the Pacers has been so ridiculous with COVID, with injuries, and granted, COVID is a thing that kind of uh, affected all 30 NBA teams. But the injuries suffered by the Pacers, I, my God, uh, Miles Turner lost for the season. TJ Warren lost for the season. Domas Sabonis missed a, a serious chunk of time during the season. Malcolm Brogdon also. Karis Levert was traded for, 
had a lump removed from his kidney, lost time, and then was declared for the play-in games, was uh, put on the health and safety protocol list for the NBA because of COVID concerns. I mean, I, you can't make this up. Jeremy Lamb, one of the primary guys off the bench, unable to play over the last few weeks of the season because of injury. So we don't know what this team looks like when it's all together and healthy and led by Nate Bjorkren. Plus, it's not Nate Bjorkren's fault that he hired him. He didn't hire himself, right? It's not his fault he was hired to be the head coach of the Pacers during a year where really what you needed was a steady hand. Nate McMillan was the perfect guy during this COVID period to lead the Pacers. You needed stability within the organization. Dan Burke, Billy Bano, Popeye Jones, along with Nate McMillan. Instead, you changed everything in a year that didn't require any more stacking of stressors, change-related stressors, to this team. So this is a front office issue, not a head coaching issue, although it became a head coaching issue because is this the right guy to be the head coach of the Pacers? It's a good question. Let's talk about Malcolm Brogdon for a minute. After the game last night, he, he was talking about how there are bigger concerns in the world. And because of COVID and other things going on in the world, you know what? Not making the playoffs is not the biggest issue on this planet. I love that, right? If he was my son, I'd be proud of him. I think there is a globally wise human being. But if I'm running a basketball franchise, I want a guy, you know, less than a day after missing the playoffs, I want this guy to be crestfallen. I want it to be the biggest thing in the guy's life that he didn't make the playoffs. I don't want him to be blasé about it because we've got Israel and Hamas launching bombs at each other now in a ceasefire or a worldwide spread of COVID and uh, funeral pyres in, in India lighting up the night sky. I, I don't, I want a human being thinking like that I don't want a point guard thinking like that, right? This is, this is such a weird situation. And, and the stacking of these stressors has put the Pacers and several NBA teams in a position where they're having real trouble negotiating what is and is not important and behaving as though a basketball game is the most important thing in the world because to a lot of the people watching it needs to be. It, the striving to win is important for fans and, and players deciding that it's really not altogether that important whether the Pacers win or lose or go to the playoffs or not. You know what? To the player, it might not be a big deal, but to the fans, it's, an in, it's a huge deal because they're investing. A lot of these people who buy season tickets and who buy single game se uh, tickets, these people don't make a lot of money. They, they're they making 18 million a year, right? It's not pocket change to them. It's not tip money. It's hard earned money that they're using to take their kids. Their fam It costs about 500 bucks, right? To take your family to a game. You know what? That kind of money, that doesn't come easy to a lot of families. And if the players are just going to kind of roll out and say, you know, it doesn't really matter who wins because we got stuff going on in the world that is really important. That doesn't make them feel very good about their investment of $500. And that's kind of where the Pacers are. Worst home record in over 30 years. Uh, haven't won a playoff series since Frank Vogel was the coach in 2014. Slick Leonard passing. This is a miserable year to be a Pacers fan. And Pacers fans need a reason to look forward to 2021-2022. Or they might sit on their wallet instead of opening it at the ticket booths at Bankers Life Fieldhouse or by calling to go get tickets for the Pacers. And nobody wants that. We want a full house for all the Pacers games. Uh, Phil Mickelson, he leads the PGA. Five under, at least he does at this moment. Good for Phil, shot a 69 today. He will be, if that lead holds, he will be the oldest man to hold the second round lead in the PGA since Sam Sneed back in 1965. How about that? Fast Friday at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We found out yesterday the troughs are going to stay, and I'm thrilled. I like troughs because troughs 
to me, are the urinary equivalent to roundabouts. The aggressor wins in roundabouts, and the, the roundabouts are built, really, for the aggressor. And I'm not talking about aggressive driving, but you got to look, you got to move, and, and you got to dart. If you hesitate, all is lost, and the people behind you might run into each other. You've got to be aggressive. When you go to a trough in the men's room, you got to sharpen the elbows, you got to create space, and you got to relieve yourself. This is what you do. If you're going to be a wallflower and you're going to stand back there and wait to be invited to the trough, your bladder's going to explode. Or worse, you're, you're going to relieve yourself without the uh, uh, use of the trough. That'd be terrible. So the trough, I like. Get the elbows out, create space, relieve yourself, back to the race. Let's go. The trough is absolutely the right decision for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. How about a bad decision? A high school football player in Houston, Texas, he's gonna, his name is Jaden Blue, and he's going to skip his senior year of high school football to prepare to play at the University of Texas. He goes to uh, Klein Kane High School in Houston, ran for 2,155 yards last year and 30 touchdowns, and he's decided he's just going to prepare to play college football rather than put his body through another season of high school football. I got to tell you, uh, I, I, my heart bleeds for the kid because he doesn't understand what a mistake this is. Playing high school football, this is the last opportunity you're going to get to play for fun, ever, purely for fun, with your friends, and go into Friday nights like that game is everything, and it's what's going to bond you to those people for the rest of your lives. And taking your foot off the gas and hitting the brake so you can go to Texas and play where football is no game, man. You know what? A terrible mistake is being made by this kid. And I, I wish I could pull him aside and say, look, you got to play. High school football is the best. High school football, I know guys who met through high school football, became friends through high school football, and those friendships almost to a man have lasted forever for their entire lives. And you're going to sacrifice that in order to what? To go play at Texas, where you're going to be recruited over the top of and maybe get to the NFL, but maybe not get to the NFL. Don't hurry through steps. Don't skip steps. Embrace the moment. Enjoy the now. Put yourself in a position to not need football financially. And you know what? Relish those opportunities to go play with your friends on Friday night. My God, where are we as a society where this is seen as a smart thing to do? Hey, I'm really excited. Got to tell you the truth. This is not a paid thing. I just got the new Apple TV box. I ordered it first day it was available on uh, April 30th. They shipped to people yesterday. I've got it today. It's right here in this box. It looks a lot like the old one, although they do have a new remote control, which is cooler than beans. Uh, very, very nice. There it is, right out of the box. Uh, much more pinpoint control, which is a good thing. And the video quality on this bad boy is supposed to be cinematic, as is the audio, if you got the speakers to back it up. I cannot wait to hook this thing up. I will give you a full report. In fact, I may do this live on YouTube because I think it's fun. Hook it up, and we'll see what it looks like. I think that that would be kind of fun. It hooks up just like the old one, and I can't wait to get it rolling for a weekend of sports programming. The little woman out of the house uh, today, tomorrow, she's gone up to see friends and family in northwest Indiana. You know what? I miss her, but I'll get by. That's what we do, don't we, fellas? <laughs> we find a way to get by. We'll talk to you Monday morning, Breakfast with Kent, bright and early, 6 o'clock straight up on Facebook Live and immediately thereafter on YouTube. Uh, we'll talk about what goes on this weekend. And I think it's going to be a while before we know about Bjorkren and so forth. Uh, Kevin Pritchard has been mum about Nate Bjorkren and the future of his Indiana Pacers franchise. We'll see where that kind of takes us. I think it's going to be an interesting offseason. And I think it's not just going to be uh, Kevin Pritchard making a decision. I think it's going to be Herb Simon too. We'll talk to you Monday morning.